Good evening, Twitch. Hello, viewers on YouTube. Welcome to Birth of a World. Good evening, everyone. On tonight's stream, we're going to be talking about creating a encounter and really a whole scenario around a high-level monster. Uh, the idea being that this could be used as a one-off in really any campaign uh, that you can just kind of drop in uh, and have as a short little adventure. What I, what I would call, I call this like a Scooby-Doo episode kind of adventure, basically. You know, you drop into a place, there's a mystery, you figure stuff out. We'll, we'll, we'll cover the whole thing, we'll put it all together. So you might be wondering, what high-level monster are we talking about? Well, those of you who've been watching the show regularly might recall this fellow. Uh, this is the Nightmare Eater, uh, which was drawn by a friend of mine, and we statted out uh, in Birth of World number 15, uh, which was back at the start of January. And I was thinking about this guy last week already. About uh, he, he makes for a really cool encounter. So let's just recap quickly uh, for anyone who might not have been watching then. So the Nightmare Catcher uh, is a CR-16 chaotic evil aberration. What it is is this small floating mask type creature that emits a cloud of darkness around it and causes people around it um, to have nightmares constantly, basically. It has this kind of region-wide effect, which we'll get to uh, when we're describing the description. But basically, what its abilities are all built around is it, it's hard for you to see it, it's hard for you to find it, to spot it, uh, and then it, when it attacks you, it'll try and put you to sleep, or it will try and horrify you with its eyeball gaze. Um, and then once you're afraid, or once you're horrified, it will use its Consume Fear ability, which is a legendary action, so it can do it every round, regardless of what else it's doing. Um, uh, and if you're asleep, frightened, or horrified, it deals a massive wallop of psionic damage to you. And that's kind of how, th how this creature works. Um, so, for tonight's show, we're going to take this creature concept uh, and expand upon it. And, if anyone, and uh, those of you who are watching, uh, this, will be edited on, this is going to be worked on live on Google Docs. So I'm going to put up a share link right now. Uh, this link will be in the description on YouTube later on, if you look down below the video. Uh, so you can uh, come and find the text also. But if anyone's out watching on Twitch in chat and you want to follow along, the link's just been posted. Um, you can also find a link uh, below the channel, or in the channel description here on Twitch. So let's talk about regional effects. This is something that uh, a lot of high-level monsters have. Is basically they influence not only you know the dungeon and the area right around them, but uh, they influence the whole area out to a much wider radius. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, for anyone new, um, this is an interactive podcast. You're encouraged to make suggestions and ask questions, and we can discuss things. Uh, sometimes we get in some really interesting conversations, completely kind of off to the side of the topic at hand. Uh, but anyway, regional effects. Um, so I was thinking, so, so really we want to take the concept, so I actually want to jump down in plot hooks for a second here. Um, the idea, I, I've been formulating a story for this guy kind of already in my head. Basically the idea is, uh, you know, you hear about uh, a town where people are randomly going crazy. Uh, I can't spell. So there's kill there there. There's been a few murders, maybe some kind of random acts of violence. Is there already a phrase I like? Random shocking acts of violence. Just gonna put that down there. Uh, okay. Uh, trade interruptions. Um, but this isn't a remote town. This is a. Uh, kind of off picture, picture like a, a village in the woods, like something, I want to say almost like a Sleepy Hollow kind of deal. Now, what's actually going on? Uh, that's making all these people crazy is is the effects of the nightmare catcher, which is to say mm 
a second. I'm going to silence my phone here. Priority for one hour. Done. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so it, it's it's giving everyone bad dreams and making them sleep longer, uh, and killing some people using its uh, by eating their fear. So this is kind of the, the, the summary uh, summary of the effects of the night, of having a nightmare catcher in this small town um, is it's it's just emitting this effect over possibly several uh, a several mile radius really just kind of seeping the happiness it's almost like uh, the um, dementors it's almost like dementors from uh, Harry Potter or something like that right it's seeping the happiness out of the surrounding countryside and making everyone. Irrit irritable and sleepy and miserable uh, until it drives them all crazy to the point of these random acts of violence. Um, first, a story hook for this, I'm thinking like the party it is basically, you, know, you hear about what's going on and you go investigate. This is kind of the, 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 the Scooby-Doo plot hook, as I call it, um, only it's not going to be an old guy in a costume at the end. It's going to be something actually quite horrible and deadly. Um, so it's so a Scooby-Doo with teeth, I guess you could say. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, so we go crazy from constant nightmares, spreading even more fear and panic and distrust. Um, this is just some examples of kind of regional effects. If, if you have a, a monster manual or something like that, you'll find some of these sometimes. They have... Uh, effects. I think the fifth edition one actually calls these out explicitly, but it, it, that's age-old storytelling, really. Um, age-old tropes, shall we say, of storytelling. Um, also, I want to do something for... Uh, we talked about this creature emits a darkness cloud um, that kind of radiates black vapors out from itself, and we limited it to 30 feet of extreme darkness of both reduced visibility and reduced light level. Uh, beforehand, from it, from a like combat mechanic standpoint, um, but from a thematic standpoint, from a from a more broader storyline standpoint, I feel like we should have this creature's darkness ability radiate out even further, and maybe shroud a whole town in darkness or fog. Hey, someone join. Hello, newcomer to the channel. Um. So uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh... Just gonna put that down there. Radius of several miles. Uh, black fog uh, fills the region at nighttime. I, I feel like it should just be th this this fog effect. This greater ra this regional fog effect should probably only be happening um, at night because the, this creature. I feel like this creature maybe is only active at night because it's it eats dreams, so it makes sense maybe that it's you know use its power is greatest at least uh, when the sun is down and people are actually asleep. So I think at night time this kind of menacing black fog fills the region and maybe a few people have noticed it, you know, night owls and stuff like that. But a lot of the the common townsfolk are going to be nice, snug in their bed, having their horrific nightmares, uh, and they're not going to know about the black fog. That's the kind of thing adventurers will notice. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, random times people die in their sleep, uh, kind of um, horror movie style, you know, kind of the nightmare in, nightmare in Elm Street almost, you know, killing you in your dreams kind of thing. Only as as a manifestation of the gameplay mechanic of having it the consume fear ability here that deals shitloads of sonic damage uh, when it attacks you. Oh, wrong tab. 
Okay, um, so let's talk about actually building an encounter around this thing now. We've got kind of the regional effect, and I, I feel like this is going to be... Um, I feel like story-wise, uh, probably have to go and investigate... Learn about the, the as part of the investigation. Left to learn about what's causing the violence and deaths. Track down the creatures there, and this is potentially uh, if if you're in a role play heavy group, this is an example of kind of a, a more role playing oriented uh, type encounter versus uh, a strictly combat encounter. Right? There's one monster here. We're dealing with a single. On a single nasty high-level monster, but first we have to, you know, do some research, do some exploration, figure out what the monster is, what we're dealing with here, uh, and then go in and fight it. Um, so where's the layer going to be? Twitch chat's kind of kind of quiet tonight, but uh, let's brain. I'm going to brainstorm some ideas here about. Uh, so obvious one is like basement. Basement, catacombs, sewer, natural caves, mines, uh, what are other... I, I, I'm focusing mostly on subterranean because this thing has a really underground feel to it. Maybe it shouldn't, though. Uh, maybe it could be in an attic or an abandoned house. Or other places where it's not going to be found easily, like somebody's closet. Um, just some of the kinds of places. Okay, hey, hi, um, Arcadian. Welcome, Arcadian, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is an interactive podcast, so uh, if you have ideas, feel free. What we're doing uh, is we're designing an encounter around this guy who we started out uh, in a previous video as a uh, CR-16 monster that puts people to sleep and then eats, puts people to sleep, gives them nightmares, and then eats their fear um, for like tons and tons of sonic damage. So that's what we're doing here if you join midway through. Um, right now we're, we've come up with kind of what it does to the area around where it is, and now we're kind of trying to come up with uh, an actual layer for the thing so we, where we can go and actually battle the thing. Uh, in an environment that's in more interesting than just, you know, encircle and beat. Um, so, I, I think I like the abandoned house idea. If you've got any you want to suggest, though, as far as places where a animate mask that lurks in a cloud of shadow uh, might be found, uh, go right ahead. It's going to be around people, though. It's got to be kind of in an area that's near, that's, like, central to or near a village. Um... I guess like we could do a crypt too, or a, um, hmm. I don't know. I think I'm probably going to go with the abandoned building uh, layer, but I'll keep these up there as uh, possible other locations. Uh, all these notes. Um, hidden room, there's another good one. Thank you, Arcadian. I'm guessing that's how you're supposed to be saying that. Uh, yeah, a hidden room. Uh, someplace disused. I don't think anyone would welcome a uh, big, nasty, dream-eating aberration. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you've got the right idea. It could be hidden in the inn or something like that, and it's just lurking. Um... That could give us a nice uh, the ability to have the for, to make a larger environment make the in bigger. Uh, Arcadian suggested suggesting you know uh, uh, so I'm going to do like I'm just going to mark this down as a kind of extension of the concept. Uh, I'd written this down as just kind of a random predator sort of thing, but Arcadian suggesting. Uh, that it could be maybe an inn run by a cult, or this creature is somehow associated with a cult that's uh, seeking to further benefit from, you know, having this thing around. Um, 
Uh, another one, it would be um, the always, you know, messing around with portals or with summoning magic and you accidentally let something in or something came through that you weren't, that uh, some wizard wasn't expecting. I, I feel like that's how things like aberrations can get through onto the material plane. Uh, from whatever other dimension they came from is, you know, as kind of a, a wizard's accident. If you got any other suggestions, Arcaden, keep it coming. Um, it's part of the reason I like to do this interactively uh, is so that we can get, is so that I can get feedback and get some more outside perspectives and other ideas on things. Um, but let's do the hidden room in an inn. Hidden room in an inn. I want to say maybe a hidden room that was used by a cult at like some point in this town's past and has been forgotten about. Because I like the I. I one idea that I've kind of latched on with this in designing this encounter is that it's in some disused part of town that people in the towns don't even know exists anymore. So it makes it harder, it makes it more of a mystery to solve um, for, for the story part of this the situation, more of a mystery to figure out where this thing even is um, rather than just, you know, oh, go here, kill thing. Oh, thank you. I have tea now. That's nice. Thank you. Um, so uh, rather than have it just be go here, kill thing, we're going to have, so let's do this. Okay, we're going to do, actually, write this down. Uh, oh, yeah, um, Arcadian, if you want, here's a link so you can follow along with the Google Doc if you're interested. Um, a series of hidden rooms inside the town's inn. Um, So I, I really like the cult idea here as far as far as it kind of a backstory goes. Now we're kind of developing the storyline that's going to go into this, uh, this, this scenario leading up to the monster, right? So the, the idea, we, it's, a, it's a very common D&D trope having, you know, oh, the, the doom cult or something like that that, you know, took over the town and was sacrificing people or something horrible like that. Uh, but to have that and then to have that concept just like, okay, we can, we can drop hints of this, right, when we're talking about leading up to the monster, when we're talking about the party trying to figure out what's going on, uh, we have the, the, you know, we can drop hints that, oh, there was this cult that was operating in town a few years ago, but they're all dead now or something like that. And the, the part, the player characters, knowing player characters like I do, they all assume that that cult is still around, is still a part of things, is still actively doing stuff um, to influence uh, events and they'll start looking for cultists maybe and stuff like that so it's kind of a red herring uh, and I really like that it's just like no actually the cult's gone but they did use these rooms in the inn eventually they'll, they'll shake out that the cult had these rooms um, towards the end of the scenario and then they'll find the monster uh, so let's uh, let us design ourselves an inn uh, if that's going to be the environment for this so, uh, Arcaden, I don't know if you've watched the show before, but I quite like using hex grid uh, for things. It's just a personal preference. Uh, if you'd rather use square grids, that's cool. Um, I'll put this map uh, up and available online after the stream at some point, and if you want to download it and play with it. Oh, Arcaden's asking quickly, what are the monster's powers? Yeah, I'll go over that quickly again in case uh, anyone just joined us. Uh, where are we here? This guy. So the Nightmare Catcher, its powers are it emits a cloud of darkness and reduced uh, visibility around itself. Um, it has the ability to put creatures to sleep, for and in this case, to into a fitful nightmare-ridden sleep. Um, and it has the ability, if it looks at you with its eyeball, with its central gaze attack here, uh, it can make you horrified and basically makes you cower in and scream for uh, a number of rounds. And then once you're either asleep or horrified or, ter or frightened, it can use consume fear on any creature that's in this state to deal a whole whack of psychic damage. That's basically how it, what it does. Is it makes you 
uh, it makes you afraid and then it feeds on that fear and it tries to keep you afraid uh, until it kills you basically because it does tremendous amounts of psychic damage. So, uh, let's just get some stuff going here. Start drawing some, let's get a basic footprint here. Uh, let's do like, let's, let's make this a respectable size in. Let's make it like uh, 14 by 20 or something like that. Hello? Oh, I'm not on a good layer. Do, 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 layer. Okay. Um, so let's do this like uh, 10, 20, sorry, I'm just 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. Let's do it like this wide. I normally do like five foot squares or five foot hex hexes center to center, generally speaking. Uh, a bit more. All right, I feel like that's a respectable footprint for an inn. Uh, so now we can start, let's make some rooms in here. Uh, let's see, we want, so we'll need some, let me try and uh, snap corners here. Let's turn that off, actually. I'm just going to do this real rough and quick. Uh, we'll have an entryway, say, here. Why is this rounded? There we go. It's apparently kept some old settings, some old tool settings from what I had before. Uh, put an entryway here. I just I have some shorthand notation that I use for doorways. Um, I can actually hold on. Let me grab another map and I can get the proper uh, stuff. Hold on a second. Do do do. Uh, yeah, this will do. Just grabbing an old map so I can get some icons and things like that that I have from before. In particular, I want this. What layer are you on? No? Doors. There we go. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll fix this. I'll patch this all up before I actually put this out online. But, uh, so here we have a nice... Oh, there we go. All right, I have a nice wooden door. I can stick right there. Pow. Okay. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, so we have a wooden door here. Let's put it in a nice, like, a corridor kind of thing. Uh, what shape do we want this in to take? I don't know. I'm thinking, like, do the uh, very, very traditional fantasy tavern, like a, a big common room with a bunch of side rooms on it, and then we'll put the secret rooms, like, against a back wall or something like that. Like, maybe we'll put the secret rooms in over here. Um, I feel like the secret rooms will be rather cramped and small, but, uh... So, yeah, let's have an entry corridor here, and then do, like, a big common room. Big common room, like that. Sure. Uh... Cheap rooms do probably like ye. Yeah, that's a good size. So 10 feet by 15 feet, I feel like, is a good cheap room at an inn. I'm just going to put a bunch of these along this one wall here. I guess we'll probably have a two story in, so I'll put a staircase in as well at some point. But, uh,. You know what, let's worry about the in details a little bit later, because this is kind of, and I know everyone loves watching me draw, but I think this is all secondary stuff. Um, so what we're gonna have here, I feel like we'll have a side corridor that maybe leads to some more rooms. Except, yeah, it looks like it goes all the way to the end here. Put a door on that. go um, and then we're gonna have 
So there'd be like rooms and stuff over here, like maybe a, a, a like private dining room or a gambling room or something like that, and put it there. And then in behind it, right in here, we're just gonna have a wall that's too thick, and that's gonna be our secret wall, our secret passageway into our secret set of rooms. Um, oh, I didn't get to copy the secret door icon. So there's our secret door. Uh -huh. All right. And then we have this whole kind of area in here, I think. We'll probably put another, uh, another noticeable room, maybe a storage room or another private room or something like that here. Astute players will, of course, notice that the uh, wall is too thick. Maybe we won't let them into one of these adjoining rooms so it's less obvious. Um, that's always a possibility. Maybe we can make this... Uh, Just make this door be locked. Come on. Group you. Group you. There we go. Come on, Inkscape, work with me. Okay, so make this door be locked. Make it a nice high DC. This is, again, it's kind of a decoy almost, but it's to uh, prevent the player characters from immediately noticing that there is this gap in between two rooms where there must be something secret. Uh, and then that opens up into this kind of wide area here. Uh, maybe we'll further section it off like that. And then uh, we should give it a stair going down, I feel like. Yeah, I'm gonna do that too. It's gonna to be there's gonna be like a secret section of the basement also, so we can make so we can make this area a bit bigger without straining stuff too badly. Uh, object to pass, node edit, uh, split those nodes. Okay. Um, ah. Damn you, Inkscape. Do, 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 do. Mark this as being a stair down. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we'll make this a set of rooms. We'll make this maybe corner that off like that. Put another door there. So, um, whatever. So we got these rooms here, and we'll make another door. Say here. Boom! Now I got this room here, uh, and here we gonna split this room off like that and like that. Okay. Uh, that room. That's just dead space, but uh, door there. So it's going to take the player characters a while to kind of filter through this area. Uh, this set of rooms. And the whole idea is right to build tension a bit. Make it slightly more suspenseful. Just want to clean this up a bit. Clean, oh, can I clean you up? No, okay, whatever. Um, just to clean this up, just clean that up a bit. But the idea is to build suspense so that when they find the uh, room, let's just make some no notes here. Rob. Let's use cult room, we'll add set dressing in later if there's time. Yeah, 
Maybe they've got a gathering room and a ritual room off in the corner there. Um, so you can kind of see how this is going to flow, right? They're going to come in, they're going to have the rest of this tavern that they can explore if they really want to. But the whole point is to get into them into this corner uh, where they find the stairs going down and uh, can get to the second level. So at the second level, uh, I feel like it should stay under the footprint of the inn. Start it like here, I guess. Ah. Not that one. Sad fill. Uh, so on the second level, we have kind of this arrangement. Uh, if, any, if anyone was thinking, wondering what's up with the boxes on a hex grid, buildings are still square. You can't really force everything to be hexagonal or triangular or whatever. So we just treat the kind of the half squares as being passable uh, normally for the sake of not going insane. Okay, uh, so that we got this stair down. The stairs going to, down to the right and from about here. So I'll do that. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Note it. So now we've got this space to work with. What are we going to do here? Well, I feel like uh, let's put in. A corridor. I know I just cut that edge out and I'm going to put it back in. Let's put in a proper corridor like that. Uh, here, I can do this even. Ba, 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 ba. Object to path. Snip. There we go. Okay. So now we can put in some rooms here. I'm just I'm I'm probably just gonna bring this foundation edge in a bit. It's like we know we're that far from the exterior wall, but that's probably just stone there for the foundation itself. Hmm. Bring this guy in too. You can always stretch it back out afterwards if you want to. So down in here, we're going to be making our boss's arena. This is the actual place. Uh, so I feel like, let's see here. So the, uh, Make a note here, we are officially under the darkness effect. So the player characters, their, their torches will be ineffective and there's going to be, they're going to be having a heck of a hard time finding their way around. And now what I want to do is I think I want to have actually mostly just a large open space down here, honestly. Uh, maybe I'll put, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. It's like the stairs are in one area. This kind of this big L-shaped area. Let's get a door on here. Let's make it a locked door just to help heighten the suspense a bit. So we've got a locked door there. And then we've got this big open expanse and we need to put some set dressing in here. So um, let's start with some pillars because it's a basement. So it's going to have poles or pillars or timbers of some sort to keep the roof up. Center that. I like to put them kind of in between hexes here. Uh, let's make that uniformly spaced out like so. When you're DMing this at the table, you will want to like that. Yes. Um, you will want to try and like show as little of this environment as possible because it's so dark. Uh, your player characters are going to naturally be disoriented. And the way to do that, if you're playing with a battle mat, for instance, 
is to uh, is to draw as little as possible for them basically just to draw you know you're here maybe leave large sections of the grid blank don't give them hints as to where their positioning is um, to make it all the more difficult uh, Wolfkey is asking why do you build on hex most use square um, I deal with a lot, I deal with mages a lot in my campaign um, spellcasters doing things that have ray attacks or circular areas of effect things like that and I find it's easier to do those kind of effects on hexagonal grids. Um, also, I play Pathfinder where flanking and positioning uh, can matter quite a bit. Um, and so for those reasons, I enjoy hex grid. Plus, I always thought the uh, moving diagonal costs one and a half or whatever to be an irritating rule. Um, so that's hex. But it does impose certain challenges, like fixing, fitting layouts for buildings that would logically be square onto a grid that's hexagonal. So, for instance, these dead corners here, like where there's a half grid, I just count that as a square, and people can still move into it just fine. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's kind of, that's, that's my reasoning for hex grid, is because the campaign I'm running, uh, my private campaign, deals with a lot of mages uh, and spell effects that have radii. Um, sure, really, I don't know, I feel like I almost have a debate on the... Uh, virtues or drawbacks of hexagonal grid at some point. Um, if you missed the first half of this and the introduction for what this monster we're actually dealing with is, uh, the whole thing, this whole video will be put up on YouTube later on. Uh, the channel link is below uh, the Twitch stream uh, in my block of links there. So what other pieces of set dressing can we put in this basement? I feel like we need some shelves or something like that to break the space up. So I'm just going to break, the, I'm just going to put in some walls here basically. Um, Consider these to be like full height walls. The, remember the players are going to be staggering around probably and mostly in the darkness. Um, this is a CR16 monster, so they're definitely going to have some resources, but uh, we can do things like make the fog that comes off of this monster not be able to... I should show you what the monster looks like since you joined late. Um, this is what we're fighting. This is what we're making the... Uh, this is what we're making the encounter for, the Nightmare Catcher. Uh, which is, here's its stat block. It's a little floating mask with an eyeball that does horrible, horrible things and tremendous amounts of static damage. Um, okay, so uh, put some shelves in here. These are just, again, for positioning sake. Uh, should note here. This is mean. This is me being mean to uh, melee, melee classes. Basically, you can't corner this thing in here unless you actually get it in one of the corners. Use free tools, by the way. Um, oh, sorry, you want to see again? Okay. Uh, just AFK for a second. So this is what it looks like. It's a floating mat. This is like this is tiny size though. It is literally the size of a floating face uh, with this massive eyeball thing. Uh, and uh, here's the stat block, which you can find. Uh, there's a link under the Twitch channel to a bunch of Google Docs. This is from Birth of World number 15, um, our CR16 Nightmare Catcher. Basically what it does is it puts you to sleep or uses its eye attack to make you fearful. And then when you're afraid, it can do a lot of psychic damage by eating that fear out of your brain, basically. And it's been lurking in a town um, and causing people to have constant nightmares and go crazy and turn violent against one another. And the player characters show up and they hear about this cult that used to be in town but was gone for but uh, has been gone for a long time. Uh, but they eventually learned there's a, in fact this series of disused old rooms underneath the inn that the cult used to use. And when they go down there and investigate, then they have to fight this thing. And they have to fight this thing basically in turf that it's controlling in the darkness, uh, where it can pick out individual characters and hit them with this horror effect and make them sit there screaming and then blow their minds away. 
Um, so we're trying to create an interesting arena to fight this guy in. It's tiny, so it's going to be able to move uh, on tiny creatures and normally occupy a hex vertex. So it's going to have a lot of space it can move. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's going to be able to pass through these shelves and things like that. And that's going to make it, you know, a bit slippery or a bit harder to fight. Um, I am going to say that this space here is probably a dead space, though, because that's just not going to be reachable, I don't think. Um, so we got that being a dead space there. And let's see. Uh, oh yeah, I should also mark these as dead spaces. Um, what other obstacles can we find out in an old basement? Like, the darkness effect that it produces itself should be a fairly effective obstacle. Um, but we want the player characters, the player characters will likely come up with some way to overcome that. Um, so, I mean, we can throw shelves over and we can do things like that too, I guess. But uh, what other things can we put in this old basement that will make this uh, a more difficult encounter or a more dynamic encounter? I'm going to just put some shelves here against the wall because I feel like that's where you'll find shelves. I like to build my environments lots so that they are make sense logically. Uh, usually it's possible to do it without compromising gameplay too much. Obviously sometimes you just have to throw your hands up and say a wizard did it, but such is life. There's some shelves there. We can put some barrels and other things like that. Oh, I'm using Inkscape, by the way. Um, it's, a, it's a free open source package for Windows, Linux, and Mac called Inkscape. Um, it's a vector drawing program, so it lets me do uh, all this vector artwork. Uh, for freehand drawing, I use a program called GIMP, uh, which is also fairly well known in the open source community. Uh, it's also free to use. Uh, I don't use any non-free software while I'm working on this project. Um, and all of the stuff that I produce here is uh, Creative Commons, and you can go ahead and use it basically just... Uh, you can use this whole video if you want to, or just ideas from it. Um, uh, freely as part of your own campaign, you just have to give me Too Many Knives, aka Rob Hicks, a credit. And that's all you gotta do, because it's Creative Commons attribution. Um, so let's... I, I feel like this is an okay, uh, is okay arena. We might want to add a few more obstacles, like some barrels or something like that. Let's do some real quick and dirty barrels and things like that here, just to just to set just to add some more set dressing and make a few more of these squares not occupiable. Yeah, I know my barrels aren't round. Deal with it. It's just me representing uh, obstacles. Maybe we've got a big we got a big round thing right here. I mean, who knows what this is, but. Uh, We'll figure that out. Um, so we're gonna let's finish populate. Let's finish fleshing out this first floor. Of this inn, because I feel like the inn is probably gonna be with player character. Gonna spend a lot of time. So um, when we were playing this out, we decided that the creatures living in a bunch of rooms that used to be used by a cult uh, in the town's inn, but that cult was kind of wiped out, possibly by other adventurers, uh, a while ago, and now we need to. Um, and this creature moved in sometime afterwards. So it's not the... We're going specifically to subvert the classic D&D trope of, like, the Doomsday Cult summons some horrible monster. And instead... Uh, and instead, we're going to have a horrible monster moves in after the Doomsday Cult left, basically. That is a shitty box. Um, let's do this. Yeah. I don't know. So we got kind of in's common room here, and we're gonna have a corridor that goes off like this. And another corridor that goes along the rooms, probably all the way from the back of the inn, like so. Bring you in so you're not overlapping that. Go objects, we want to uh, union you. All right, we got our corridor. Um, in here, we can put like, I don't know, maybe this room extends a bit more. Or like, or we can put a small, we can have a small kitchen or something like that back here. 
Uh, kitchen door. Boom. 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 Just putting in doors. These are the green. So the in my key, I have these marked. These are uh, wooden unlocked doors. Or wooden doors that are unlocked. I think this is dead space. How? Maybe it's keeping the roof up. Whatevs. Um, Uh, I guess I could add this corridor going around further. I don't know. You can make the end layout be whatever you want, really. The, the, the key thing, though, is just this uh, this set of rooms over here, really, this disused cult area with a secret door. Um, we're going to make the DC for the secret door pretty darn high. Uh, we're going to make the DC, like, uh, 28. I don't know. I can look this up later, but uh, basically we want something that's going to be not too easily noticed um, by characters who are of appropriate level. Um, depending on what system you're using. Uh, in this case, we're, we're setting this up for 5th edition. I think 28 ought to be reasonably high uh, difficulty for it. Um, let's talk more about the kind of theming for this encounter, I feel like, with the time we got left. So, um, So this is the this is the, the the general feel for the thing, right? Is the monsters lurking in a series of hidden rooms inside of the town's inn? These rooms were used by a cult a few years ago, but they're disused and forgotten now. Um, let's talk about plot a bit. Let's get some NPCs going here. What are going to be important NPCs? Um, Do this properly. So we'll have the one guy who definitely knows and could definitely help the party out um, get killed by deranged, by deranged, sleep deprived townsfolk um, right after the party get there. That will help like draw their attention towards the end, but now no one's gonna be able to answer them about the secret rooms. Um, who else do we need? We need probably uh, um, and probably. Uh, if this is a bigger town, maybe we've got a like a town, uh, a priest. We need an old priest and a young priest, maybe. I don't know. Uh, or I, um, hmm. we can do uh, like policy. Most medieval towns don't have police, right? They're just kind of mob justice, more or less. Uh, or or a sheriff. Let's do let's do a sheriff. We'll have to say there's a sheriff. Um, the priest and the sheriff could theoretically be the same person, but I think we'll keep them separately. Let's add some more details for the priest. Uh, I feel like he might be an important character. Uh, he can be also sleep deprived to believe the town is haunted. Um, um, obviously, if you have a party of evil people, a good line priest probably is not going to help you. Sometimes that happens, but uh, um, if I were to. Uh, if I were to use my own campaign setting for this guy, I would make him a priest of Rhea, uh, the Dawnbringer. Uh, if you're more using traditional settings, you'd be like Palor or something like that. Uh, 
Um, some, some, some equivalent good aligned deity. Probably a good choice for the priest here. He's also sleep deprived. He believes the town is haunted. Uh, he's willing to help the party. Um... People are sleeping in the church for thinking it'll grant them protection against the bad dreams or maybe just protection against, you know, deranged family members who are going a bit nuts from lack of good sleep. Uh, and uh, if he's being too helpful, you could always pull the trope of, you know, having, having someone try and kill him. Maybe the player characters can avert the murder. Uh, uh, Wolfkey is asking if we have any world map yet. So this, I'm making this as just a one-off encounter because I liked this design of the creature that we came up with a couple of days ago. There is a, another setting. There, there is a setting that I'm working on as part of the show. That's normally what, what I'm, this show is about. But uh, once a month or so, I design a, a new monster just as a kind of side series in these videos. Um, feel free to go back and watch. I was drawing maps uh, last week, actually. I was drawing. I was drawing a bit of more of world map, just doing some freehand drawing and discussing uh, freehand map making techniques. Uh, that's on the YouTube channel, which is again you can uh, see linked underneath the video. Uh, Kind of fleshing out a few details for these NPCs. Obviously, uh, I'm not going to have time. This show's only an hour long, so I'm not going to have time tonight to give them all personalities. But uh, as this is just a, a think of this as a writing prompt, if you will, I'm going to put this all up. Just whatever we can come up with tonight, I'm going to put this all up online. Put links uh, and I put a link in YouTube under the video, and you can find the, this Google Doc. And I'll put a PDF of the uh, Inkscape drawing, just what we've got of it. Uh, up and think of it as a writing prompt for any DM who wants to continue off of this. Um, I like I like this idea of too of having everyone like kind of believing something different. Uh, I think it's important to kind of. Throw out, point out lots of possibilities for the party members to pursue. Um, so he believes the cult is back. Um, uh, and this will... Um, so maybe the sheriff is someone we'll talk to later on. Uh, So th this is this is the thing, right? We we killed the innkeeper, the tavern owner. So we don't know. Uh, that's one person who also knows about the the cult secret rooms, but the sheriff knows. But the sheriff's too busy. He's not available uh, when the party first arrive in town. So they have to go and scooby it up themselves a bit. Um, they have to go and kind of you know do the scooby doo thing and figure try and figure stuff out for themselves first. And then, if the player characters are getting stuck or frustrated or you're running out of time, if you're doing a time-limited adventure, um, you can have the sheriff show up and say, hey, there's, I think the cult is back, there's their rooms. And then that sends the player characters off looking for cultists. Um, I could also say this guy. Um, the guy who kind of remembers the cult but not details about them.
so here's so I think this is the bones of an of bones of an interesting one off at least. Um, it's always a problem with time not being able to uh, not being able to finish all these things necessarily in the hour that I give myself for the show once a week. Um, so I think we're just going to park that there, and then I'll put this all up online, and anyone who wants to take this as a writing prompt can go and do it. So um, that's the end of tonight's show. Uh, as I mentioned, all this is Creative Commons 4.0 attribution. If you want to go ahead and use it, it's already ahead. I just appreciate if you give me a credit, and if you tweet me that you're using it, I'll give you a shout out here on the show. And if it's online or someplace it can be found, I'll give you a link. I'll put a link out for it. Other than that, please uh, follow here on Twitch and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube channel link is below the video. I can't get a catchy YouTube name until I've got a lot more subscribers than I've got because of YouTube's rules. Uh, so everyone who subscribes is helping me quite a bit. Uh, thank you. Uh, there will be no show next week or the week after. I'm taking two weeks off because of I'm, I'm going on vacation basically for two weeks. So the next show will be at the second Wednesday in February will be the next show. And we'll be back to, again, working on the campaign setting that we've been building out. Uh, and we'll probably start doing what the next adventure is going to be and where we're going to go next. Um, after dealing with the... Well, I will, we'll be continuing with the, with the plot line that we started before. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye!